Okay, welcome back to chemistry. So I want to get you thinking about a really important model for chemistry, which is called the kinetic molecular theory of gases. And it's got a long name, but the, but the concept's really, um, really straightforward. And if you get your head around it, it's really helpful to understand the behavior and predict the behavior of gases in particular. So um, let me, let me switch you. So, so here's the idea. The idea is really just what is showing here in this FET simulation is that we can think of gases as if they're just billiards balls floating around in space and colliding with each other. So they're important things to notice from this. So first of all, that the, the volume of space that, the, that is around them is large compared to the size of the, the balls themselves. So we're going to ignore the volume of the gases, which is pretty good approximation most of the time. Um, secondly, notice that when the balls smash into each other that they don't stick. So that's, uh, that's not really true all the time and in higher chemistry classes we can account for that, but it works reasonably well for this level of chemistry. So we'll assume that they bounce into each other fully elastically so we don't lose any energy and they don't stick to each other or to the sides of the walls of the container. Um, the important thing, though, is notice that as I heat this, that the motion of these molecules is going to increase, right? And along with the temperature, right? So, so the really key part of kinetic molecular theory of gases is saying that temperature and motion are the same thing. So when we measure temperature, what we're really doing is we're measuring how fast these molecules are moving. So let me formalize this, uh, this a little bit for you, right? So um, formally, we're going to have pressure be defined as the, uh, as the collisions that happen with the walls of the container. We'll get into pressures and describing that in just a minute. Um, but really what we're looking at are sort of molecular size collisions that are going to happen. So these are the five uh, postulates that are important for a kinetic, kinetic molecular theory of gases. One, that gases are small particles. They obey Newton's laws of motion. Uh, they have mass, they have kinetic energy, and they'll have momentum and things like that. Uh, secondly, that they, uh, they really don't occupy much, much uh, space, which is true uh, the scale that we'll work at, um, and that they don't lose energy in collisions, they don't stick to things, and importantly, the temperature and kinetic energy are the same thing. So when we put a temperature probe in there, it's just measuring how fast things are smashing into it. important part of this is, is recognizing that if we look at a, at a single um, uh, type of molecule at a single temperature um, that we have a whole lot. So there's just so many, chemistry is so small and there's so many molecules inside of even a small container of gas that some of those molecules are going to be going a little bit faster than the other ones, right? So when we stick a temperature probe in there, we're measuring sort of an average temperature. And you know, there are some molecules that are going that fast and some that are going faster. So the, we get this sort of distribution. This is called Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. But it's really important we get into how reactions can happen is because importantly, some are going much faster than others. And so I can get some reactions to happen because they're going so fast. But it's worth noting um, that you know, we have gas molecules that are moving around. Some are moving very fast, some are moving slow. We get this average, uh, average from this. And again, this is called a, a Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution which represents really, if I looked at every individual molecule, how fast is each one going, and then I plotted this sort of histogram on it. The thing that's interesting about it, though, is that I, I can look at a single temperature, and I can see that some gases that are heavy, right, that they're going to be moving more slowly, right? So temperature is related to kinetic energy. Kinetic energy is a function of both mass and speed that something is going, so math and velocity. So for instance, something like xenon, at room temperature, on average, right, this purple line is moving about 200 meters per second. And uh, we have argon, which is moving, what, between maybe 350 meters per second. So I find this remarkable because the speed of sound is 343 meters per second, right? So think about this. So argon at room temperature is moving around at the speed of sound. And we'll look at these other things like neon and helium. Like helium is moving on average like three or four times the speed of sound. So we think of, uh, of, uh, of gases sort of, uh, we model gases are moving around quite slowly. But in reality, that, that small chunk of gas that you're breathing is a chaotic mixture of molecules that are moving multiple, um, multiple times the speed of sound. And uh, things are happening really quickly, and we're getting very violent collisions that are constantly happening. So notice that if, if, I, if I speed up this, so if I heat this up, things go faster and faster and faster, and I get a higher and higher temperature. Right? And 
as you cool things down, the temperature lowers. Right? So someone did a similar experiment. Instead of changing the temperature, they sort of they measured the volume for a fixed amount of gas. And what they uh, what they found when they did that was uh, that you get these different lines. So for these different gases, you know, um, one, two, three, and four, uh, that you get as you measure that as you measure the volume change as the temperature changes. Right, that you can extrapolate, and they all appear to meet up at some point. So at the point that the volume becomes zero, ends up being the point where motion slows down to the point where nothing is moving at all, not even jiggling a little bit. Right? So this is what we define as, as absolute zero. So we've defined what zero Celsius is where water freezes, but you know if you're not working with water, that's not very helpful. And uh, it doesn't really mean anything in the physical world outside of the random point for one object or one uh, molecule that we're, we use a lot. Um, but Kelvin was designed as, uh, as being the absolute temperature scale. So um, absolute zero is where things stop moving at all. Remember, temperature and kinetic energy are the same thing. Uh, this happens at pretty low temperature, right? So minus 273 and uh, 0.15 Celsius is where we uh, where we identify zero Kelvin. So on the Kelvin scale, zero is 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 down there, and water is going to freeze at positive 273, and water is going to boil at positive 373. Room temperature is about 295. So on the Kelvin scale, the 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 space that we live in is actually pretty high temperature. And you know, going back to the idea of of the violent collisions that are happening in room temperature air that in terms of gases, gases um, operating at room temperature for us is a very high temperature gas. Um, hey, a few things to uh, hopefully, hopefully get out of this. So first of all, uh, a really good concept for have uh, to think of gas molecules like billiard, billiard balls that are whizzing around. Uh, collisions uh, is uh, with the container sides is really what generates pressure. And the kinetic energy and motion are, in fact, the same thing. And absolute zero is the temperature scale that we're going to use with gases. And that's going to be a Kelvin scale. And we live at a pretty high temperature environment from the Kelvin scale. Hope this is helpful. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.